The reality is a molecule called DNA. Now you might think that the structure of a molecule that contains the instructions for making a complete cell must itself be very complicated. But in fact, the basic structure of DNA is remarkably simple. Here's a schematic model of DNA. Unwind the double helix and it consists of two long strands that form a ladder-like structure. The strands of DNA are strings of chemically repeating units which act as basic building blocks. Each unit contains a sugar, deoxyribose, a phosphate group, and a base. Together, these form a nucleotide. There are actually four types of base. Adenine, thymine, cytosine, and guanine. Within a strand of DNA, the bases can come in any order, and just how important this sequence is will become clear later. What's more, in double-stranded DNA, the bases match up in a particular fashion. Adenine always pairs up with thymine and guanine with cytosine. This precise base pairing means that the base sequence in one strand is complementary to the sequence in the other. The base pairs are held together by relatively weak hydrogen bonds. But when summed up over the whole DNA double helix, these hydrogen bonds impart great stability. It's DNA and its classic double helix form, and it's from X-ray crystallography, so it's an accurate model of DNA. If we unwind the double helix and unzip the two strands, you th see these things that look like teeth. Those are the letters of genetic code, the 25,000 genes you've got written in your DNA. This is what they typically talk about, the genetic code. This is what they're talking about. But I want to talk about a different aspect of DNA science, and that is the, the physical nature of DNA. And it's these two strands that run in opposite directions for reasons I can't go into right now, but they physically run in opposite directions, which creates a number of complications for your living cells as you're about to see, most particularly when DNA is being copied. DNA is about two nanometers across, which is really quite tiny, but in, a, in each one of your cells, each strand of DNA is about 30 to 40 million nanometers long. So to keep the DNA organized, regulate access to the genetic code, it's wrapped around these purple proteins, I've labeled them purple here, it's packaged up and bundled up. All of this field of view is a single strand of DNA. This huge package of DNA is called a chromosome, and we'll come back to chromosomes in a minute. We're pulling out, we're zooming out, out through a nuclear pore, which is sort of the gateway to this compartment that holds all the DNA called the nucleus. All of this field of view is about a semester's worth of biology, and I've got seven minutes, so we're not gonna be able to do that today. No, I'm being told no. Um, this is the way a living cell looks down a light, light microscope, and it's been filmed under time lapse, which is why you can see it moving. The nuclear envelope breaks down. These sausage-shaped things are the chromosomes, and we'll focus on them. They go through this very striking motion that is focused on these little red spots. When the field cell feels it's ready to go, it rips apart the chromosome. One set of DNA goes to one side, the other side gets the other set of DNA, identical copies of DNA, and then the cell splits down the middle. And again, you have billions of cells undergoing this process right now inside of you. Now we're gonna rewind and just focus on the chromosomes and look at its structure and describe it. So again, here we are at that equator moment. The chromosomes line up, and if we isolate just one chromosome, we're going to pull it out and have a look at its structure. So this is one of the biggest molecular structures that you have, in, at least as far as we've discovered so far, inside of us. So this is a single chromosome, and you have two strands of DNA in each chromosome. One is bundled up into one sausage, the other strand uh, is bundled up into the other sausage. These things that look like whiskers that are sticking out from either side are the dynamic scaffolding of the cell. Um, they're called microtubules, but names not so important. But what we're gonna focus on is this red region. I've labeled it red here. And it's the interface between the dynamic scaffolding and the chromosomes. It is obviously central to the movement of the chromosomes, but we have no idea 
really, as to how it's achieving that movement. We've been studying this thing called the kinetic core for over 100 years with intense study, and we're still just